Okay. Good evening and a warm welcome to the first artist talk of what is hoped uh, to be part of a series of webinars or artist talks. My name is Hamid Kishmir Shekan and I'm a senior teaching fellow at the School of Arts, uh, SOAS. I need to especially thank the Center for Iranian Studies, SOAS, for hosting this event, in particular Nargis Farzad, the chair of the Center, for her support, and also Aki El Bozi for coordinating the event and IT supports. Uh, this session is being recorded. And uh, after the talk, the floor will be open to the audience, and you are invited to write your questions in the chat box or Q&A box. Today, is, uh, it is my uh, great pleasure to welcome Simin Karamati to our webinar. Simin will speak to us from Toronto, and we'll be talking about uh, the trajectory of artistic practices with particular attention paid to, to the recent uh, projects. Uh, just a very brief introduction about uh, her works. I'm sure uh, many of you are already familiar with her works and herself, but just as a matter of introduction. Uh, Simin Kalmati is an Iranian-Canadian multidisciplinary artist. Uh, she received her master's degree in fine art from Art University of Tehran and postgraduate degree from the George Brown College in Toronto. And she has received several prizes and awards, including the grand prize from the Dakar International Biennale in 2004 for her video installation entitled Rising Up or Falling Down. Her works uh, have been exhibited in art galleries and museums internationally. Uh, among the most recent ones are the Aga Khan Museum in Toronto, Red Hat Museum in Los Angeles, uh, Saarland Museum in Saarland, Germany, and White Chapel Gallery in, in London. Uh, working uh, with a wide range of media, including photography, film, and painting, Karamati uh, explores various subjects and concepts derived from her personal life the news, uh, social media, and also history and literature. Her works often address the themes such as identity, diasporic experience, uh, women's rights, and uh, gender equality. In many of her art practices, critical evidence, critical uh, observation of the society and politics is uh, depicted through uh, self-presentation. She focuses on self and all which is evolving within self, prompted by the external elements. Uh, it testifies the fact that uh, she maintains a curious probe into the, her immediate uh, surroundings, even when she re-examines uh, literary sources and the history, particularly in her recent uh, projects. Uh, I've been lucky to have known Simin and her work uh, for about 20 years now and have collaborated on a few exhibitions of her works, uh, including the, the Guangzhou Video Art Festival in 2012. Uh, that was a great uh, privilege. Uh, Simin John, thank you very much again for joining us uh, this evening, and the floor is yours. Hello. Um, first of all, let's, let me thank you to SOAS for organizing this talk today. And also thank you to Dr. Hamid Keshmishakan for inviting me for this talk and um, chairing this talk today. I am so pleased to be here uh, and conducting and delivering this talk uh, and representing uh, some of my artworks. Because of the limitation of time, I have um, uh, I have selected um, a number of um, my video arts and multimedia installations and through the um, talk that I'm going to um, um, deliver today, you will see the transition of my work uh, through this um, time.
Just give me a second and it will be okay, everything. So, um, the first artwork that I'm going to talk about today is self-portrait. Um, I did this uh, video art in 2007. The length of uh, this video art is 7 minutes and 21 seconds. In this piece, uh, the audience witnesses um, as my face slowly melts into the darkness portrayed on camera until eventually I become faceless. At some point, this transformation also serves as a tribute to the 1999 student movements in Iran, which resulted in countless deaths and incarceration of the university students. On the other hand, big changes was happening in my life during that year. And it also have some psychological parts included, layers. Watching the video, the audience reads my thoughts transcript onto the screen. Overall, my intention uh, was to use this self-portrayal as a platform for addressing social, political, and gender segregation issues. So let, it, let me um, show you a, a section of this video. Insomnia is um, another video art I did in 2010. The length of this video is seven minutes and six and eight seconds. The image comprises the window of my bedroom, the light white curtain that um, moves um, through the morning breeze and the cloudy sky that stays gray and does not even rain. The sound is recorded on an early morning of a weekend in Tehran. As you know, Tehran is a very busy and crowded city. I needed um, a calm atmosphere so sound. So I chose to record it on a weekend during early morning. For this piece, I incorporated lines from Virginia Woolf's The Waves. I chose the parts that are talking about this uh, about sleeping and someone um, and somehow singing and whispering a lullaby so that said i have to add this information here that literature has a significant presence in most of my artworks whether directly or indirectly i utilize literature to enhance uh, the story uh, or add narration to my videos while um, I may not adhere to the original story or structure. I choose pieces based on the theme I'm exploring and select lines that best align with my focus. Here in this video art, I'm talking about the desperate sleepless nights and days that we were experiencing every day in the aftermath of the protests in the result of the presidential election in 2009 that led to the imprisonment and death of lots of individuals in Iran.
The Painless Method um, is a video art I did in 2013. The length of this video is eight minutes and 13 seconds. I created this video art as a response to the capital punishment. Unfortunately, Iran ranks second in the world for executions with only China surpassing them. So I have to add here that I moved to Canada and I immigrated to Canada uh, in 2012. Um, the fact is that after I moved to Canada, I believed um, now that I'm outside of the country, I cannot work on the same social and political issues about Iran. At that time, it did not seem right to me until the um, execution of the two young adults happened. In 2013, two young men, one 19 years old and the other 20, were executed publicly in the park that, belonged, uh, that belongs to the Art Forum in Tehran during the morning prayer. Their charge was robbery with a cold weapon, which was a very big knife. At this point, I could not stay silent and do nothing about it. Um, that said, to create this video art, I conducted extensive research to gain a new perspective. Though I am connected to my past, I realized the importance of examining things differently and adjusting my artwork accordingly. That said, I did a research on the history of execution all around the world. And I focused only on the executions by beheading and hanging. In this work, I also have incorporated Lines from the book Golestan by Sadi Shirazi, an Iranian uh, renowned poet from the 13th century. I chose the lines that are talking about the pleasantness of breathing. The writer constantly reminds us that how thankful we shall be to God that gifted us the sense of pleasure we experience after each inhalation and each exhalation را به خلعت نوروزی قبای سبز برد در بر کرده و اطفال شاخ را به قدوم موسم ربی کلاه شکوه بر سر نهیده ساره نالی به قدرت او شهد فایق شده و تفم خرمایی به طبیعتش نخل باسد گشته So after that um, I did this video art which is also a manifest um, um, in 2014 I am not a female artist from the Middle East in exile I am an artist. The length of this video is 15 minutes and 57 seconds, which is almost 16 minutes. With this video art, I did another manifesto where I draw inspiration from a well-known quote by American artist, Jean-Michel Gatsquet, who said, um, I'm not a black artist, I am an artist. It is important to note that addressing individuals using a descriptor other than what it is typical can create a sense of separation from the norm. While inclusion is important, uh, it can also be falsely manipulated. Our identities can serve as both a starting point and a tool to fight against segregation and establish our existence. I wanted to emphasize that my background is one, uh, one of an artist with a unique history, but is this not a common experience for every artist, regardless of where they come from or what gender they are? In this video art, you see um, the artist, me sitting in front of the camera, and in the first minute, um, almost the first minutes, 
um, my nose starts bleeding and it never stops until the end of the um, video. It, it, it just continues. Um, so um, the, the sound effect of this video is telling the story of my life, my life from my childhood ever since um, 2014 that I, I chose to live in, in Canada. I didn't translate any of the sounds. There, there are no uh, subtitles um, on this uh, video art. Um, uh, so the section that I've chosen today to show you is um, um, about, uh, is talking about um, the period that there was a war between Iran and Iraq. So when I was a child, um, we had a life then, um, the. 1979 revolution happened, uh, then the war between Iran and Iraq happened, that it lasted for eight years. Um, when it happened, I was a child, and then when it ended, I was a um, school teenage, um, school teenager. And then um, after that, good things happened in, in my personal life, and then um, protests happened in Iran, and then um, the sound is talking about all of this history. So um, the sounds that you will hear now are um, the um, red alert, uh, the mili military marches, um, the stories of the frontiers and the soldiers and the martyrdom of the warriors in the front lines, and then the end of the um, uh, war. This is the section for today. <laughs> آنها این کانال های انباشت از انواع مین و سیم خاردار را حفل کرده بودند تا سدی مستحکم در برابر پیش روی رزبندگان اسلام به وجود آید So um, misplacement and immigration um, was the things, the two two things that um, my life was merged with. So I started to include misplacement and immigration into my um, artwork. The space in between all the physical objects. I did this video art in 2015. Each channel is with a length of 23 minutes and five seconds. This is a three channel video installation investigating the cause of migration and misplacement. In this artwork, I have studied the huge migration of the people fleeing hunger, war and oppression from their homelands, yet they ultimately lose their lives droning into the seas in search of peace. In this art piece, I have incorporated the lines from the book, The Red Sense, which have also uh, been uh, translated, which is also translated into The Red Intellect. 
Um, this is the second time uh, that I'm um, that I've been inspired by um, this book by Sohra Bardi, a 12th century Iranian philosopher and writer who was executed for his thoughts. The story um, of this book is about the spiritual and philosophical journey of a bird uh, that transforms into a red flying creature. In this work, I have been focused on uh, the search for um, the tuba tree that can uh, be found only in Neverland. Tuba is, in this story, tuba is a tree that promises to bring peace and happiness by, through its fruits to those who reach it. In my piece, however, the individuals who yearn to find this tree lost their lives in search of it. My goal was to create a sense of universality by depicting a diverse and relatable group of people, rather than focusing on specific cultures or regions, I sought to convey the idea that we are all witnesses to this tragedy. Using poetic visuals, I have captured the very last moments of each person's life as they droned under the sea. The centerpiece, the channel in the center, um, is a corpse gently brought to shore by the waves, surrounded by photographs of the migrants arranged in the shape of a boat. Again, um, I continued to work on um, the theme of misplacement and the causes of immigration um, in my other video installation, The Edge of the Cloud. But this time, my focus is towards the reaction of the people who, who, who read about these news. Um, the Edge of the Cloud, uh, is a 27 minutes and 18 seconds um, length for each channel, a two channel video installation that explores the theme of migration and the impact of war on individuals. The video is displayed across two screens placed in um, opposite to each other with the audience positioned in between. To fully appreciate the um, the piece, the viewers must turn their head uh, toward um, each channel um, to find the connection between them. Um, the video follows the story of a heroine who has witnessed the horrors of war and lost loved ones along the way. The monologue is told through subtitles that run throughout the um, in entire length of the video. Alongside this, um, the artwork also examines the reactions of people on social media to tragic events um, like war, revealing the sense of helplessness many feel in the face of such disasters. The audience witnesses the rise 
and fall of a heroine who in time will be forgotten. Finally, the video explores the impact of identity in the lives of migrants fleeing war and hunger. It highlights uh, the forces that pushed refugees back to the sea to drown, and in doing so challenges viewers to rethink the power and influence of identity in our global community. One thing to, uh, I, I forgot to add previously is that you see um, for, for this demonstration, I had to put the, the two channels or the three channels uh, of each of the video installation that you see um, beside each other. And you are hearing the, uh, the sound from uh, one source, which is your devices. But in fact, uh, when you're in the middle of the installation, there are different sound sources and you can focus on each uh, sound um, if you want, if you wish. So um, the people that you are seeing on the darker screen are actually the people who are reacting to the death of the person in the middle on the white screen. And they are somehow watching, um, like sitting in a theater, watching a movie that um, about their reactions, about their life. Unsolicited Love Letters um, is my most recent video installation. Um, um, I did this um, work in 2023. This is a tri triptych of videos, a three channel video installation. The length of each um, video is 23 minutes and 43 seconds. It's almost uh, 24 minutes for each channel that will run together. Um, this video draws inspiration from the timeless story of Leili and Majnun by Nezami Ganjabi, who is an Iranian poet and writer from 13th century. The equivalent of this love story in Western literature, we can say is Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Leili and Reis, the story is about Leili and Reis, they fall in love. Uh, this was not accepted by their families and tribes. Leili is forced to marry another man. Uh, Reis goes mad and chooses to live a wild life. So from that point onward, his alias becomes Majnun. Majnun in Arabic means the mad man. And uh, we use it as well in, in Persian language. Um, uh, Majnun here is madly in love. So I wanted to work on a love story. And um, this was the greatest love story from all time in, in the Middle East. So um, I decided to work on this time on this one, but in, in different layers, I'm also working about misplacement and also work, um, questioning the gender equality because, uh, because the, the 
classical um, love stories have this male gaze over them. Um, and the love lover and the actions of love uh, are always being um, done by, by, by the man lover. So as part of my exploration on displacement and identity, my artwork delves into liberation of the census based on gender in society. Through history, women and marginalized genders have been limited from expressing themselves visually, audibly, and through touch. How, these, how do these uh, societal norms influence a woman's perception of herself and the world around her? The project reimagines Lely in a new location as a middle-aged immigrant woman who lives in who lives a solitary life. Her beloved Majnun exists only in her thoughts and memories. And she speaks passionately of the undying love they shared. As she relays her tale, she also touches on the themes of war and the immigrant experience, all the while demonstrating her autonomy and pride in her own passion. These are the images um, that I chose to show you, um, the how, how I made the character of, how I worked on the character of Lely to, to make her a contemporary modern woman but at some point she has this, at some point, at some um, uh, sections of the work, she has this um, traditional um, look as well. And Majnun um, is um, this young man who lives in, in the mind of um, Lely in a void. And um, um, I have, um, worked a lot on the um, character, on this character. And um, so in the, end, in the end, I decided to follow um, uh, the work of um, the Armenian um, renowned um, filmmaker, Sergei Parajanov in his movie, um, The Color of Pomegranate. So I've been influenced by that one in creation of the character of Majnun in this artwork. If you have more questions, ask me when the talk is over about um, this filmmaker. So um, here I'm showing you um, a one uh, minute section of this uh, long tale. Uh, and video installation. Um, again, you're hearing the, the sound uh, from through one device, which is uh, through one so uh, source of sound, which is your devices. But in, re in real installation, you will hear um, the sound separately from three different sound systems and you can focus on each of them. So um, I I forgot to add this thing that um, in in the original story, Lady wrote letters to Majnun. So that's why I um, chose this title for this video installation, which is a love story. Um, Elephant is the uh, in the dark is uh, the title of a multimedia installation that I did. It is on view at the Agahan Museum currently in Toronto. 
um, in, in the exhibition entitled Rumi, um, which is celebrating the life and legacy of um, the poet Rumi. Um, this is an interactive and immersive installation based on the story by Rumi with the same title. The story is about a group of people that um, have never confronted an elephant in real life. They have to enter into a dark room where an elephant is placed there and um, the people have to touch the creature with their bare hands and describe their understanding of its shape. Their expressions are not even close to reality, and this makes the story fun. In the end, Rumi says that if you um, could share your ideas, or even if you could bring a candle with you in the room, you could have a better understanding of the whole creature. So I chose this um, story because um, it is full of images. That said, um, I put the audience in the middle of the story, immersed by the images in an interactive multimedia installation with translucent 3D printed resin sculptures. The work is based on a classical story that talks about the importance of sharing experiences and the use of all senses in understanding a shape or a theme. So to be honest, this is the first time so far that I have been fully loyal and faithful to the original story. So I didn't need a part of this story. I, want, I wanted the whole story. So I worked on it. Um, in this um, multimedia installation, I, I um, managed to build a round shaped um, room. So when the audience enters the room, there is um, on one side, there are these three objects, 3D printed light, shiny objects that resembles parts of um, an elephant body and they can touch it and then they can turn on the um, screens and um, uh, the screens um, are showing um, a, a very close up image of the elephant. Uh, followed by a line of the story. And on the other one, wall, uh, which is again a round wall, um, I um, created apertures. Behind these apertures, the, the huge creature is moving and uh, the audience can only see some parts of it. Uh, they can never see the whole, the whole image. If they want, they can go closer and... Um, and, and closer uh, to the um, aperture to see what part of elephant they are seeing, what is the skin look like. And um, to have a better um, um, understanding of the installation, I made this video um, in the Elephant Museum uh, for this talk today. So um, um, the audience can enter the room. On one hand, um, they can see these um, sculptures, they can touch them, they can um, push the button and then um, the image will appear and the sound and um, it will be followed by a line of um, the poem. And uh, on the other side, when they turn around on the other side, they can see um, these apertures on the wall that the creature is moving behind them and they cannot have um, a full image of the huge creature. So they are actually in, in this story, walking in the story and in the images that um, uh, Rumi was creating with his literature, with his words. So when they go um, out of the room, and they um, just um, look at the room from a, part, um, from a distance, they can see um, the whole image of an elephant herd or an individual elephant. So they can have um, the complete image, finally. The, the last work that I'm going to talk about is um, 
um, um, a work that I started to to do. I when I sent my proposal, it was April two thousand and twenty two, and eventually it turned to be a protest art. So I will tell the story very briefly here. Um, Paycon Art Car is a nonprofit, nonpartisan organization that um, unites Iranian contemporary artists with a classical Iranian car, um, Paycon, which is which was a beloved national vehicle. Um, this um, Hailman Hunter um, that was um, after the revolution, it was used as um, taxis in Iran. So they do this to advocate for the restora restoration of human rights and dignity for all in Iran, no matter their race, religion, gender, or their sexual orientation. I sent, as I said, I started to work on this research-based project in April, 2022. Um, my, my proposal was about um, um, the resistance for the freedom of expression and the history of women's fight, women's resistance for freedom of choice to, to wear. Um, to do so, I started to work um, on the documentation that we have. The oldest documentation that we have for this um, goes back to around 170 years ago, uh, the time that Tahereh Qurat al-Ain, an Iranian philosopher, and um, poet uh, unveiled herself publicly and she was executed. Uh, so I, I, at that time, I decided to title, um, to entitle the work as um, Eye to Eye Vis-a-Vis, -vis, which is a translation of Chehre Be Chehre Ru Be Ru, one of the uh, most popular poems by Tahereh um, Qurat al But I changed it, I will tell you why. So um, I started to work on it. There were very, a lot of um, resistance were made by renowned women, unknown women, underground movements, underground um, um, communities by women were made uh, for this resistance throughout history. Um, the closer we uh, we are to the um, current time, we have more documentation about this um, resistance by women. And I continued my study until uh, my research until um, um, the Angalop Street Girls, which started by um, the the movement started by the action of Vida Mubahed. So the girls in 2017 went on to, went over a utility box or uh, on a higher place in a crowded street to peacefully demand the right for freedom of expression. Um, at that point, we uh, I was waiting for the car for the canvas to come. So we started to um, incorporate a lot of um, human hair, natural human hair. And um, so while we were incorporating the hair and we were waiting uh, for the car to come, um, there were some um, obstacles for the transition of the car. Um, the incident for Sepi de Rashnu happened. So Sepi de Rashnu was a young a university girl, is a young university girl uh, that was not wearing a hijab in a bus. So uh, she um, eventually went to, to fight with um, the women, related to morality, morality polices. And then she was jailed and she was tortured to, and, um, to force confession. And um, eventually she had to apologize publicly to the leaders and to the country because she was not wearing her hijab. So that was a big oppression. And okay, um, we thought, okay, we have time. We will include this in the research. And uh, then Masa Amini, um, killing happened. She she was killed while she was in custody because she was uh, wearing her hijab not not properly. And then this was the start of um, one of the most uh, progressive revolutionary movements in Iran, which is called the Women Life Freedom. At this point, 
I was sewing the hair. I was working on it, but I thought, okay, who am I? What I'm doing? It's not right. Women in Iran are literally putting their lives in danger. They are resisting. They are literally being killed or um, being tortured, being imprisoned, but they are fighting for their lives. And this was the time that an artwork was not enough. So I was sewing the hair, I was working on it because it made me feel closer to, to the Iranian women and their fight. Um, but um, we, we couldn't show the work. Um, it was not right. My, it was, um, it was in the middle of a revolution, so an artwork does not work. Um, so we waited until this time. Uh, at this time, and this um, time, and um, in this sense, um, we need to tell the story of what happened last year in Iran. We, we need to tell that this resistance is going on. Women in Iran are still fighting, are still resisting. Um, this is not um, ended, this has not ended. So um, I went to New York, I completed the um, installation. I um, transformed the canvas, the car, uh, into a hairy creature. I covered it with uh, human natural hair. A lot of this hair was donated by my friends who cut their hairs, their hair, uh, and a lot of um, people that I don't know them personally, but they donated also their hair uh, to be added to this installation. And this is a multimedia installation comprising of a pile of human hair, two video installations, one sound installation, and um, I did all of it on, on the Paycon. So at this point, this is a protest art. Uh, we changed the title to Masa Amini, herself Masa Amini. I believe a protest art is not um, an artwork, it's a protest art. And all the credit goes to, to the resistance and um, the fights that um, the Iranian women are, are doing. Uh, a protest art influenced and dedicated to the bravery of women in Iran. This work will be launched in June 13 um, this year, like um, two weeks from now, in Oslo um, Freedom Forum in Norway. Thank you for listening. Okay, I need to. Hey, thank you very much, uh, Sim Jun, for this fascinating talk. Thank sharing you. Sharing, you know, with us your very impressive works. I'm almost overwhelmed with. Uh, thank you. So I, I tried to be fast and stick to the limited time. And I know I, I skipped a lot of information. If there's any question, I'm here to answer. Wonderful, thank you very much. Uh, yes, uh, please, uh, uh, could you write your uh, questions in the uh, Q&A uh, chat? And uh, so I will get through the questions. But before the questions uh, coming up, uh, can I just ask you a question that I was just thinking when uh, you are presenting your work, especially some of them, actually. I was quite uh, intrigued by uh, you mentioning your challenges uh, with existing expectations, mainly related to the idea of stereotypes, perhaps best reflected in your work as, or as you put it, uh, your manifesto. I am not a female artist from the Middle East uh, in exile, I'm an artist. Uh, in your later projects, uh, you reference some old sources, in particular Persian literature, for example, I mean, 
in Elephant in the Dark at the Alcorn Museum is still on. Uh, I would be very interested if you could uh, elaborate on how you found it so challenging and how you think you overcome the potential pre-existing expectation that uh, comes. Yeah, that at that time when I did in 2014, when I did that um, video art, I was on edge with the expectations that I was newly coming from a country that was, it was um, still um, the af in the aftermath of the green movement at the time, and it was very exotic to talk about it. And I didn't want to, to, to get trapped by the expectations, as you said as you mentioned, but by the stereotypes. So um, to answer your question, I will refer again to Jean-Michel Basquet, who I borrowed this title from him. He said, I'm not a black artist, I am an artist. He was not denying his race, but he was fighting for, for equality. So um, for instance, Jean-Michel Basquet, we also remember Andy Warhol. No one called Andy Warhol a white, um, American artist, you see what I mean. So um, when I when I was saying that I was um, I was making this manifesto that um, just let me talk. Don't expect me. Don't um, don't judge me from uh, my background. It is included. I am this. This is real. But let me let me talk about it. Uh, let me be creative. And then you can critic, you, you can criticize if you want. So that was it, right? I, I, I'm not sure if I uh, answered your yes, question. Yes, sure, thank you, thank you very much. So uh, let's uh, get through the questions. There are uh, a few questions. And the first one uh, uh, is uh, from Katisha Hande saying that thank you for fascinating and very informative talk. Can you please tell us more about the role of autobiography autobiography in your own? In Iran or in my work? In general, your autobiography, general, I, I mean, how the your autobiographical experience would perhaps... Uh, All right, thank you for the question. This is a very good question. Um, so for me, uh, autobiography works in the way that I can work in both psychological and then as an interpretation uh, on, on what's going on. So um, uh, in the, for instance, if I'm talking about um, social political terms, if I'm talking about immigration and misplacement, if I'm talking about um, a love story, I need an interpreter. And I think my body, I can do whatever I want to my body, but if I choose another one, I have to be responsible for that. Um, I think um, autobiography just um, helps you to be more um, um, honest, to be honest. And then uh, at the same time, the artist puts um, herself or himself, puts um, themselves um, in a vulnerable uh, situation. So you can criticize the artist, right? Thanks very much. And another question is from Faye uh, Behbahani. Uh, thank you for this wonderful presentation. Uh, I was wondering if you can elaborate more on your definition of protest art and how it is different to art that reflect on societal changes or regime. Okay. Um, um... This is complicated. I, I cannot make an, a statement, but I believe that a protest art is dedicated to a movement. Um, when, when a movement is happening and you do something um, um, alongside the people that are doing that movement or demanding something, it's not, it doesn't have to be always a revolutionary movement. You're protesting for something. So you, you want to be aligned with those people, with those demands. So this, um, this is working together. But when you're creating an artwork, you are doing it from a distance. You're working on a history. So it, it is an artwork. Eventually, like 
either one or the other one, they, they, they will have an effect on the changes in the society or vice versa, the, the, the changes in the society can have an effect on the art world. But um, that is my definition. And thank you very much for this very, very good question. Um, yeah, I think um, um, an artwork is, is based on a research, based on, 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 on um, a knowledge, based on a sense, but a protest art is related to something else directly. That is the only difference that I see. Uh, if if there is any ambiguity, please ask again, and I, if I can, I will continue to to talk about it. Thank you. Uh, another question or uh, note from uh, Nazi Sedoga. Thank you for your thought provoking and important artistic expression of what humanity has been facing. Two questions. I couldn't find the second one, but the first one is. Uh, the sound and the prints of text, the quality of text, and uh, I mean, I think the sound was all right, but the prints of text or the quality of images, on most of the frames were quite weak, unreadable and non-visible. Was this deliberate? I think it was- Yeah, for this, uh, for this presentation, because of the copyright, issues because I, I am an artist um, and I sell editions of these artworks. I had to be cautious with the um, demonstrations that I will have. Uh, so I didn't try to have the best quality that I can for this demonstration. I'm sorry about that. Okay, uh, I will read the second one later uh, after it came, but uh, in the meantime, uh, Sarah Fairberg, uh, says fantastic works. Were you influenced by Shir Nishal, although your work is both more literally referenced and more political than I didn't get the uh, comment. I didn't understand. I mean, well, the question is, were you ever um, inspired by Shir Nishal uh, or her work uh, at all, or uh, if? If not, so, or yeah. if it is, I mean, it, I, case, I have a very, yeah, I have a very uh, great um, respect for artists, great artists, um, including Shirin Neshaw. Um, I, I have been inspired by everyone in this history of all world. And whenever I have been inspired by an artist, I have definitely mentioned it in, in my artwork, as well as the um, recent artwork, uh, Leili and Majnun, the unsolicited love letters that I said that I was um, influenced by um, the Armenian um, director, uh, Sergei Parajanov and his work, um, The Color of Pomegranate. If I have been directly um, influenced by a writer, an author, an artist, like Jean Michel Basquet, like anyone, I have included that in the information, in the statement, or in the title of the work. Other than that, I can say that I have learned a lot from all the great artists, including Shirin Neshad. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Uh... Rujano Muhammad Zade uh, says, uh, Dear Simin, you mentioned you do not believe in protest art. I didn't think you that. said so. I don't know. So, as an Iranian artist living in the current situation of Iran, what is our role? How should we act as artists in a provocative way? So, let me. Um explain and uh, repeat it again. I didn't say that I don't believe in protest art. The, the latest, um, I'm, I'm in two weeks, I'm, I'm going, going to exhibit a protest art. I, I believe that a protest art is not uh, credited only to the artist. And there is not, um, like everyone, a lot of the protest art that you see are done by unknown people because of the situation they are. Um, so they, they don't credit any name over the artwork. So it is the movement that credits the, the protest art. Um, I believe in protest art. 
I didn't say that. Um, but um, and it's influential. It can it can make changes to 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 the demands and to to the movements. But when you do an artwork, you do it um, with a distance. If you're working, uh, for instance, I was working my self-portrait and I was influenced by the movement, students' movement in the 1999 in Kuya Danishka and what happened there. That, that is an artwork. I was not involved in that artwork when I was creating, in, in that movement when I was creating that. But um, so when I started to work, for instance, on the um, Pecan art car with this freedom of expression, at, at first I was do I was, I thought that I'm going to do an artwork because I was doing a research, I was working on that. Then I, I was, then we all was in the middle of a movement. So it cannot be an artwork any, anymore. It is talking about a movement, so it is a protest art. Um, that is my my definition of this. Thank you. And Janet Dell says, "How do you gain an understanding of the experience to women taking part in the women life freedom protest? And what are you, what are your key considerations when representing this experience?" So what is my... What are the main, perhaps, uh, points that you would like to express in your works while... About women, life, small... freedom. Okay, this is the first artwork that I'm... This is a protest art. I cannot say that. But um, so during the um, the revolution, uh, we and my uh, one of my other um, colleague, artist friend, Jinu Stagizade, we, we did... Um, um um managed to arrange to to um, to do a performance art with other artists um it, it was a group work so we did that kind of protest performances but the credit does not go to us it goes to the um movement it goes to the movement because if if there was not a movement happening this performance would not be there and um, so if you're asking what I'm doing about it, uh, how I include it in it, um, how, how I include this movement into my artwork, these are the things that I'm doing, but in my artwork, I think in the future, I can talk about it. Uh, now I'm, I'm too, too much involved with it to, to talk about it in my artwork separately. Did I answer the question or do I have to elaborate more? Um, you could if you want, but I think uh, that would suffice for now. Um, perhaps we should uh, continue with um, other questions as well. Azadeh uh, El Mizadeh says, thank you, Simin Jan, for sharing your work with us. I'm wondering what do you think about uh, the impact of political art in the context of the diaspora? I mean, not within the context where the actual social and political issues are. You mentioned about, you know, when you moved to uh, yeah, Canada. that was that was my struggle when I moved to 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 another country. But um, that said. Um, at that point from 2012 onward. So I, I, I moved to Canada in the middle of the year. Um, I thought that I have to reimagine, I have to recreate, I have to do more research and I have to, to work on the issues that I'm, I'm, I want to work from the place that I'm seeing that. I'm not in, in the middle of that um, um, social political situation. I am connected to that. That is the cause that I have moved here, that I'm living here. So it's not separated from me, but I have to work on this from this position, this geographical position that I'm placed in. So that's why I expanded my view, for instance, for the um, painless method, I started to work on um, the history of um, execution, not only uh, about Iran, uh, so, um, I, I mean, if you if you consider um, one of the ways can be if you consider 
your position, your place, your distance from, from what, what's happening and include um, your information uh, from your point of view, um, that would be more meaningful. Yes, sure, great, thank you. And uh, Omid Shakiri says, thank you, Simon John, for your presentation. The, the challenge that, uh, that a basket uh, had in Bell Hooks' words was to be accepted in the art world as an artist. But the problem was the art world was, and still, to great degree is, male dominated white uh, supremacist, European, Eurocentric, and uh, he was not letting unless he had to cho choice to accept himself branded as a black American. And his work uh, many times got associated with the African primitive arts. How do you see your work in relation to this dominant male of a Eurocentric postmodern post-colonial artwork since you show your pieces in contemporary spaces? A great question. Yeah, that is right. Um, I think I have, I'm struggling with the same, um, not me, like I think any artist from that is not white male, uh, European centered, it is struggling with the same um, thing um, constantly. So I think um, that manifest works that I made after Jean-Michel Basquet still works. So um, yeah, uh, it, it's not been solved. It is not a, a solvable matter. I mean, like it's it's an issue that exists. Um, but it 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 shouldn't stop us from talking about it and um, objecting, objecting it. Yes, that's right. Yes, I mean this is a problematic situation. I think many so-called non-Western artists are grappling with in the arts, international yeah. arts. Yeah. Um, can I just? Uh, in the meantime, that you know, until we get uh, new questions from the audience, uh, ask you another question, which is a bit different from this line of uh, you know, uh, questions. It's about something that I found uh, very interesting in your works, and I would really love if you could uh, just talk a little bit more about it. it is it the when you, I mean, in many of your works, uh, you're dealing with uh, personal psychological challenges in your personal world, personal life. Uh, but at, uh, in fact, at the same time, you're trying to address, um, I mean, through these kinds of personal challenges, more collective challenges in your surrounding context, especially when you were Iran or in, you are now in Canada. Uh, I'm just thinking about amnesia, for example, uh, the work that you uh, explained how you were affected by the atmosphere of the post-election uh, years and the situation in. Uh, could you just, uh, if you could, uh, uh, a little bit uh, elaborate on this aspect of your work as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah, that's right. When you when you um, autograph, when you have a um, when you when you um, auto portrait, create an auto portrait. So you are somehow, I, as I mentioned before, put you put yourself in a vulnerable position to be judged, um, to be criticized, and um, it can also include your personal and psychological layers of your life um uh, it is obvious so for instance in 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 the video art the first one that i showed the self-portrait um although i was um objecting to to what happened to the students i was relaying retelling uh the the story of the students of guyadanishka in tehran at the same time very big um changes was happening in my personal life. So uh, this is a connection 
um, I don't know. I'm I'm born in 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 Iran, and my mentality is like this: your personal life is included in in, in into your social life. Even though I'm, it's it's more than ten years that I'm living in in Canada. I'm, I have the same attitude. So my social life uh, reflects in my personal life, and I have a dialogue between them. So that's why when I work on a love story, I also include misplacement. I want to talk about the liberation of senses of women, but I also talk about migration of war and war, which I have been traumatized since my childhood and it exists. It, have, it has always been exists. It has always exists in my, um, in my artwork. Great. Um, I may have another question to put. Uh, it's, it seems that uh, uh, the audience, uh, uh, they just gently uh, encourage you to write your questions if there is any. Uh, otherwise, I have another question to ask you, and uh, that is uh, perhaps again uh, uh, about both uh, visual and literary aspect of your works and the importance of uh, language or text in your works incorporated within your videos, mostly, I mean, from uh, first work that you showed the self-portrait uh, until very recent ones. Uh, yes, I mean, how you think, I mean, you usually use both uh, English and Persian text, and uh, I could perhaps understand when uh, you want the audience uh, to read your text in both Two different kinds of um, audiences and two different, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of uh, language backgrounds. Uh, I mean, there are references to literature sometimes, or uh, some of your interpretation of uh, literary or poetic texts. For example, in Amnesia, uh, I believe that he used uh, the the. Uh, the text from uh, what was he, the author? But, Virginia uh, Woolf. Virginia, Virginia Woolf. Woolf, the book, The Waves. Right? Yes. And so, I mean, my question is because they are not really, they are acting more than simply subtitles. Mm -hmm. They are uh, actually, uh, you know, even acting as a visual element, but you really want the audience, the, the, the viewer, to read them. Um, could you just uh, explain a little bit about your yeah, uh, yeah, exactly. assistance, uh, you know, uh, emphasis exactly. on that, the presence of the text and uh, how they would really, uh, they should work within your uh, works. Thank you for the question. Yes, exactly. Like, um, even in, in, in my multimedia installation, the, the elephant in the dark, I have incorporated the lines of the story in, in, in the um, um, videos. So um, the word, the shape of the words are characters of my uh, videos, installations, artworks. Um, I don't remember that I have used words, actual words and calligraphy in my paintings and photography, but in my videos, they are a character, a part of my work. So for instance, when you see my thoughts, they are being written, they are being, um, I don't know, how do you explain it? So crossed out and, um, um, so the image of, of the word is important for me. And um, the power that the literature that I choose, um, the, the power of the words also adds value to my video arts and video installations. For instance, when I choose a, a word from Virginia Woolf, she has a character in literature worldwide. So the character adds um, to, to what I want to say. And I choose words. I, I'm not faithful or I'm not loyal to the original story, but the, the words that I want uh, are, are being told um, by Virginia Woolf or by Furo Farzad or by Sohra Bardi. So that, that will include in my work. 
Um, yeah, I, I, I'd rather have them um, written. Uh, at some point, there are some, some works that I have used them as subtitles, but again, I'm reading them. For instance, in, in Leili and Majnun, The Unsolicited Love Letters, I'm reading them, so the story is part of my, my artwork. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. So they have different functions depending on the work. Right. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, once again, uh, uh, on behalf of uh, SOAS, I thank you very much, Simin John, for uh, joining us this evening and sharing uh, your wonderful works with us. And thank you very much, uh, audience, for uh, joining us today. And hopefully we will have uh, uh, next sessions on the artist talks in the future. And uh, that would be great to have you all again. All right, again, we can't really physically, uh, you know, uh, help for seeming John, but, you know, from the distance. Uh, thank you again very much, everyone. And so hopefully see you in the next program. Thank you. Let me also thank you. Thank you to everyone. Thank you to all the audience bearing with me and listening to me. And thank to SOAS and yourself. Thank you. Thank you.